In this video, I want to talk about how to start learning a foreign language. Now, why should you listen to me? Who am I? My name is Ravi Kunz, and I study eight languages every day. Those languages are Spanish, German, Japanese, Mandarin, Teochew, which is a Chinese language, Korean, Arabic, and Sanskrit. I also study French and Italian, but not every day. So you might say I study 10 languages on a weekly basis, but eight of the languages every day. And I study for about maybe a few hours a day. And so I want to talk about how I got started and how I recommend that you start learning a foreign language. So to learn a foreign language, it really comes down to two things. It comes down to your routine and your method. So to create a routine, you need to have habits. Now, the best book that I know of for making habits is Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is a fantastic book if you want to dive in deep on how to make habits in your life, not just for language learning, but for anything that you want to master, really. It really just comes down to the habits and doing it each and every day. And if you want to learn the best way to do that, then I highly recommend this book. However, if you don't have the time to read this book and you just want to know the best way I've found to create a habit, I'll tell you that now. But I do recommend you getting this book. So the best way I've found to create a language habit is to attach it to another habit that you already have. So, for example, a few years back, I wanted to start learning German again. And I noticed that in my life, I was exercising in the morning and I would sit on the exercise bicycle for 20 minutes. And usually I would just look at Reddit. I would browse the web. I would do things that didn't really enrich my life. So what I decided was when I sit down on the exercise by school, I'm going to look at German flashcards for basic sentences. And I started doing that every day. And I knew that every time I sat down to exercise on the exercise bike, I just opened up Anki, which is a flashcard program on my phone. And I would just look at the flashcards for those 20 minutes. And that was such a great way to get into the habits of learning German for 20 minutes a day, which really jump-started my studies again into learning German. So that's an example of attaching a habit to something you already do. You might want to study, for example, during your breakfast, or maybe during your lunch if you have time, or maybe on your commute to work. If you have time in the car or on the train, the bus, whatever it may be, you can listen to audio programs like Pimsleur or other instructional programs to improve your language. Another thing which helps a lot is social accountability. Now, this is one of the places where I feel like classes actually make sense because usually for me, classes don't really make sense because I feel like I could be using the time more wisely. For example, when the teacher is quizzing another student about a point I already know, I could have been using that time to further my studies in the language. However, classes are great for social accountability because you know you're going to be meeting up every week for the class at a specific time. So it forces you, not forces you, but it helps you to get ready for the class, to study to the, the chapter or whatever the lesson is for that week, because you know you're going to be seeing the other students, you know you're going to be seeing the teacher, and you don't want to let them down. You don't want to look foolish. You want to keep up with everyone and keep going. So this is a fantastic way to keep your studies in line and keep going. Another great way of getting social accountability is through a conversation partner. For example, if you have a conversation partner that you meet with every week, you know that you're going to get that hour in each and every week. And even if you don't do any studying throughout the week, at least you have that one hour where you know the other person is expecting you to show up 
and expecting you to be there to talk. So my best advice is to make habits for language learning, to make a routine, because if you have a routine, it's simple, it's easy just to keep repeating the routine day after day after day. In fact, if you don't do the routine, it's going to feel off to you. The same way that people who make an exercise routine feel off when they don't exercise. But when they do exercise, they feel like they're in the groove. Likewise, you want to do this for language learning. And this way you don't have to depend on things like discipline or uh, willpower. It just becomes something that's a part of your everyday routine and you just naturally do it. For example, uh, I have Chinese language exchange partners. So, for example, today is Thursday. I met with Jing and Inuo at St. Joseph's University here in Philadelphia. And so I have those two hours of just speaking in Chinese. Now, if I were just left to my own devices here at my house, would I have studied Chinese for two hours straight? Probably not. But because I was engaged in the conversation with my uh, language exchange partners, that kept me going and it kept me speaking and listening and learning for two hours. So that's a great way to not only be engaged in the language, but also by making these appointments or schedules or times that I know I'm going to be meeting them and having them expect me to show up. That also helps me going week after week after week. So now for the method. The first thing I'll say about methods is you don't want to get hung up on finding the best method because even doing a little bit of a poor method is way better than spending your time seeking out information or trying to find the next best program or find the next best book or the next best resource which you think might be able to teach you faster. This is just distracting you from the actual studying that you should be doing. <clears throat> the best advice I can give you is to start with any method and try it out. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to continue to experiment. So keep changing things, keep trying new resources, uh, keep motivating yourself to experiment so that it doesn't get stale. And this is a good way to keep you engaged in the language. Even me, after having studied languages for decades, I still experiment and try to figure out new ways to get the language into me. So my advice to you is one, don't waste your time uh, finding new resources because you really should just be studying and studying even a poor method is better than not doing any studying and just spending your time looking for resources. But also experiment, and that will keep it fresh. It'll keep it new. And if you experiment long enough, you're going to run into a method that works for you. Because the truth is, the best method for you depends on your interests. I know people who have learned languages like, say, Japanese through watching anime. I don't think I could ever learn Japanese through watching anime because I just find it tedious to watch television programs. But some people are really into watching television or watching anime, and that's a great way for them to learn Japanese. Uh, some people are more social. They find that by going to classes and interacting with people, doing exercises with real people or having language exchange partners, this is the best way that they can learn the language. I know other people who learn languages just to be able to read books. So for them, the best way they learn languages is by themselves, by not interacting with anyone else and just reading books, reading textbooks, diving into novels for native speakers and learning through just purely reading by themselves. So at this point, once you've begun to learn a language and you found some method that's working for you, you've experimented to see what works, what doesn't for you, uh, you have the routine going where you study each and every day, 
once you have one language down, then it becomes very easy to add other languages. And for me, studying multiple languages at the same time is very important. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I study eight languages every day. And a lot of people are like, wow, how do you do that? And why do you do that? And the reason is because at one point in my life, at some point, I'm going to have to be able to use all eight languages because if you don't use a language, it begins to decay. And so in order to keep all your languages from decaying, you have to use them. And if I want to know these eight languages at some point in the future in my life, I may as well start learning that skill now of using the eight languages today so that I can get good at that skill from the beginning. Now, the secret to languages is that the more languages you learn, the easier it gets. So a lot of people say, wow, you know eight languages, you know 10 languages. That's amazing. I can barely learn one language. But the truth is, if you can master one language or at least get good at studying one language, it becomes way easier to be able to study eight languages. In fact, the more languages you stack on, the easier and easier it becomes because you learn the meta skill of how to learn a foreign language and you get used to studying foreign language vocabulary. You get used to studying different grammatical patterns and you get different to putting that into yourself so that you can use it. So I hope that helps you. If you made it this far in the video, give me a thumbs up on the video because it helps get my message out to more people. And if you haven't subscribed already, I, I think you really should subscribe because, hey, it's free and you might learn something that changes your life and helps you learn a foreign language. And that's very valuable. So I hope this video helped you. We'll talk again soon. Thank you so much.